Hey everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another movie review. Recently, I watched The Secret World of Ariete. Well, actually, that's what it's going to be called <laughs> when it's released here in the States, so pardon me for that. Actually, the real name of the film is The Borrower Ariete, which is actually more appropriate. Uh, the story concerns a, a little race of people and they're no bigger than your thumb and they're known as the borrowers and they borrow items that humans will never know that they're missing like little cubes of sugar electricity um, just bits and bobs and <laughs> gidgets and whatnots and whatchamacallits and <laughs> Just items that everyday that they're just everyday items, conveniences that we just kind of take for granted and we don't even notice that they're gone. Um Ariety is a very um she's a fantastic character. She's a great role model, just strong, uh curious. Uh she's um she's got all of the um, the characteristics that um, young girls could definitely look up to and she's um, she's unafraid to show her emotions which I think is tremendous and the ironclad rule of the borrowers is not to let human beings see you because if you do then you have to move to another place uh, because it's thought that Ariete's grandfather was eaten by a toad or perhaps he was seen as well by, by a human and maybe that's why they had to move. It, they didn't really go into that in the, in the film itself but it's uh, from the very beginning uh, the music is absolutely breathtaking. It is probably the, the most serene beautiful music I've ever heard I was just so mesmerized by it and it just uh, was a combination of Celtic versus uh, Celtic meets Japanese style music and it was just absolutely lovely and marvelous and I was just so taken by that music because it, it kind of made me homesick <laughs> even though I've never been to Ireland and I really want to visit Japan both of these places are very near and dear to my heart um, I really enjoy the opening song I, I thought that it was <laughs> really phenomenal and very spiritual um, from the very first scene where um, Shiro is being moved into a new house. You don't know his condition yet and I'll get to that because it's very important to the the arc of the story and where it goes. Um, Shiro is being moved into a house with a caretaker um, <laughs> and uh, it's just the the colors, the, the setting happening in summertime and just everything is so bright and vivid and and green and just it makes you feel so calm and but things really aren't it's actually so much different for the the borrowers they they seem so unafraid and um courageous and uh strong they're little warriors and um, <laughs> I just I love the borrowers particularly Ariete because she's just such a <clears throat> a catalyst in the story and I'm not gonna say why that is but we find that Shiro has a heart condition and um, <laughs> I'm not even going to say that much about that because that is important near the end of the movie itself which is very tear jerking it, it's a bittersweet end but it's um it's very heartfelt and it i was crying hard when i saw that because it's 
the essence of what true friendship is all about and as far as I'm concerned Miyazaki never fails to disappoint and, and this is one of a, one of his masterpieces and it just it shows the contrast between those who respect um, other species no matter what they are and ha ha um, harmony with nature as well and you can see that with uh, the way the borrowers interact with their surroundings I mean there's this little pill bug he crawls into Arietti's lap and she pets him and actually he curls up and she bounces him in her hands and then he kind of unfolds and goes his merry little way meets his other pill bug uh, mate and they crawl out of the way underneath a, a log that she happens to be sitting on but I love that scene just because it was just so wonderful and there's so much fascination in this there's just magic and every little detail I don't know how Miyazaki does it but he just so meticulously puts all these details into the movie and I noticed that there was a dragonfly's wing that um, Arietti's mother used as a quill and I thought oh <laughs> just details like that I mean yeah, normally if, if you were watching it you would have to watch it again because there are just so many tiny things that are used within this film that just make it unbelievable and it's just it's incredible it truly is and I really think that this is the best interpretation of the borrowers I've seen and I've seen all of them I I watched the cartoon when I was little and I just fell in love with it it was one of my favorite cartoons growing up but the live action movie I think was the second best interpretation of the borrowers that I have seen and, and it it's just a <laughs> it's an adventurous film and, and this one even has more of that adventure and you see things from the borrowers perspective versus the humans perspective and there's a contrast between that but then you meet Shiro and Shiro he's just uh, I absolutely adore his character he's got such a good heart he's so kind and gentle and calm rational and um, <laughs> you can see he ha he's in balance he is a character that understands um, his his uh, purpose in life and actually his uh, purpose shifts a bit and I'm not going to say how or why but th this is what makes the film so um, fabulous I believe and it's very philosophical and at, at first glance you might not think that but it's it's on a pretty deep scale if you think about it and the parallels between their worlds and um, Shiro's understanding um, possibly of his own mortality and he, he does talk about that he talks about extinction and I thought woohoo we're getting into some really deep philosophy here this this is meant for <laughs> classes in college not for youngsters well I'm sure that there are a lot of youngsters that would understand that because um, I'm gonna go into a personal story here but when I was about I think uh, seven no wait it was 89 I, I would have been 10 when I was 10 years old my grandmother was going to Houston to um, well this is when my aunt actually still lived in Houston she never she no longer lives there but anyway I'm getting a little bit sidetracked but uh, she went on an airplane to visit my aunt Roberta and um, my grandma Nellie she I just there was something I knew that was wrong and I, I knew that she wasn't going to come back and I just had a tight knot in my stomach and I looked straight at my dad and I said Nellie's not coming back is she <laughs> and I don't know what prompted that in me but I just I knew it I, I just knew that something wrong was going to happen and um, she didn't she didn't come back she had an aneurysm and that's what took her from us but uh, she she lived a long healthy life and it's the same thing with Shiro here I just I feel 
Uh, pardon me. Sorry, my computer went to sleep. But I feel that his character is so spiritual that he understands um, the true meaning of his life. And he is in connection with everything. And you, you can even see that. I think he even con convinces <laughs> the cat to, to get along with the with the borrowers because at first the, he is a he, he is an enemy of the borrowers because he probably mistakes them for mice um, the borrowers have other enemies as well and they've got cockroaches as enemy crickets um, even crows and crows are much bigger than they are and there's one scene that I really like where um, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say what happens but there is a crow that flies into the screen window and you go rah, 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 rah. and um, Hana, the, the caretaker, she rushes in, she says, What's going on here? Ah, how did you get in here? And she she rushes toward the crow with the slipper at her foot. Ow, ow, get out, ow, 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 ow and she <laughs> she whacks it on the head multiple times. I thought, Oh man, gosh, Hana, no, stop. You're being mean to that crow. What did that crow ever do to you? But that scene actually cracked me up because I've been in a situation like that with a boat tail grackle and a grackle tried to eat my fingers off and I saved her life. But uh, <laughs> And all the while, uh, if Shiro was on the other hand, uh, uh, well, Shiro wasn't there. If Shiro had been there, he would have been, you know, tried to uh, be as gentle as he could with uh, getting that crow loose and just trying not to break his neck and just kind of wiggling him out of the, the screen door and letting him go and like Hana, Hana just whacked that, that poor 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 bird but it's um it's really a just fantastic and this is probably one of the best animated films I've seen in a long time um other than um I don't know if I can compare it to Arthur Christmas or not, but Arthur Christmas is the only animated film I have seen this year, and I can't really compare it to Cars 2 because I did enjoy Cars 2, but um, it's not one of Pixar's uh, better films. Let's just leave it at that and move along. Um, I think it's better than Arthur Christmas because there's just so much more awe and wonder and childlike delight because Arietti, she's just so curious about the world around her and she's just such a lovely character. She's got so much spirit and she is such a fey character and you cannot help but love her. She's just she's perfect um yeah she might be a little bit um childish in some aspects but she redeems herself for that she she does so much for her her mother and just tries to take care of everything and she's a diligent daughter she loves doing laundry and i just love her she's <laughs> she is tremendous and I um, I think that um, she is just outstanding. I give this movie six stars, <laughs> and I know that's probably my highest mark for for a film I've ever seen. But Miyazaki has always remained a fixation in my life. I've uh, he is one of my idols, and I hope and aspire to just create like him and make masterpieces like like he does and um, maybe one of these days I will actually meet Miyazaki-san and just um, be able to tell him in person arigato because um, I just admire him so so very much I have so much just utter respect for this man and he, he is just <laughs> he's a genius I, I've yeah, I, I know I'm probably going way over my head, but I, I just think that he's such an artist, and I myself, as an aspiring artist, I, I cannot help but <laughs> it just almost brings tears to my eyes. Um, that's uh, basically all I have to say for um, Arietti, and it's going to, it's been dubbed, and it will be in cinemas in February 
and I have not seen the American version of it, but I have seen trailers of it, and I think Disney did a good job. From what I've seen, I can't really judge yet because I haven't seen it, but I, oh, this is the best animated film I have seen in a long, long while since uh, Goro, Goro's film, um, Tales from Earthsea, which I just thought was just stirring and <laughs> unbelievable. And yes, perhaps one day the son will surpass the father, but we'll just have to wait and see. This is a very aspiring project that he did and I still think that Miyazaki is the master son has yet to surpass it but um it'll be intriguing to see what Goro comes up with in the future but as a as a fan and a, a lifelong um <laughs> watcher and enjoyer of Miyazaki's films like it gives me a lot to aspire to and a lot to look forward to and I just think that Miyazaki is a mainstay in our in our culture and time and just his, his he is such an inspiration and I I just pray that I can be remembered like he is and <laughs> when that time comes I I won't be um <laughs> squandering my 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 money I'll be giving it to charity and doing um altruistic works with it but, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking too much. So that's all I have to say about Arietti. <laughs> Two thumbs way up. <laughs>